Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode. Uh, we're going to be working on Unit 1, Lessons 1 and 2. Our topic for this episode is where we learn. Let's get started. Okay, our objectives for the day are we're going to talk about school subjects and places in a school. We will read about Selma and Yin Jang's school days and answer questions. We will talk about famous places in Cairo. We're going to read about two places in Cairo. We will answer questions about a tourist leaflet. We will use can or can't, must or mustn't. And let's get started right away. Okay, I want you guys to um, think about what subjects do you study at school? I'm sure we all have about seven to eight subjects that we learn at school. So I want you to think about them and just jot them down. You can write them in the comments or you can write them on a piece of paper. How many lessons do you have today at school? So when you go to school, I want you to think about the number of lessons you have per day. Some schools have six, some schools have seven, some schools have eight. So what about your school? You can write your answers down in your notebooks or in the comments. Now we're going to jump to the next slide. You're going to be reading uh, the website about students in different countries and how many lessons do they have each day. So as you read, I want you to focus on the number of lessons they have each day. I'm Salma and I'm from Egypt. Today, I've got English, maths, social studies, Arabic, science, and music. We have our science lessons in the laboratory. We must be careful in it. It's next to the library and opposite the toilets. We mustn't talk to each other in the lessons, but we can talk at break in the blank. After break, we have music. The music room is at the end of the blank. It's on the first Floor. So I walk up the blank. My name is Yin Zheng. I am a student at a sports school in China. You must be good at sports to go to this school. Today I've got English, maths, and science. The English blank is on the first floor. After lunch, we can go downstairs to the blank to get ready for PE. Then I must practice karate for five hours in the blank. I like karate. I travel to school by bus. The bus can't go in the playground, so it stops just outside the school blank. So I want you to try and count how many lessons do they have each day. We can look at Selma's number of lessons along with Yin Zheng's number of lessons. Okay, so the answer is Salma has six lessons, whereas Yin Zheng has only four lessons. You can always pause the video to check your answers. Okay, so in exercise three, you're going to be completing the text in the exercise with eight of these words. So you're going to reread the text and fill in the blanks with the words on the left-hand side that we have here. So the words are stairs, gym, classroom, gates, corridor, changing room, toilets, laboratory, and playground. Let's read exercise two or question two. We mustn't talk to each other in the lessons, but we can talk at break in the where do you think people usually have their break time? In which place at school? In the playground. So number two is playground. Let's jump to number three. After break, we have music. The music room is at the end of the... So if we're describing a location of a certain classroom, we, we can say that it is at the end of the corridor. The corridor is the long hallway that you walk through in order to reach a classroom or to reach a specific room. We will go to number four. It is on the first 
floor. So I walk up the, usually you walk up the stairs. So if you're going to the first floor, you must take the stairs. Let's jump to number five. The English blank is on the first floor. The English classroom is on the first floor. So people usually have their subjects taken in a classroom. Okay, so let's read number six. After lunch, we can go downstairs to the blank to get ready for PE. So if you're going to get ready for PE, you probably need to change your uh, uniform, right? So in that case, the answer is changing room. You go to the changing room to change your outfit to get ready for PE. Now, let's go to number seven. Then, I must practice karate for five hours in the blank. Where do you think you're going to practice karate? Probably in the gym. Okay, now let's go to number eight. The bus can't go in the playground, so it stops just outside the school blank. So, if you're riding the school bus going to school, the bus usually parks outside the gates of the school which is basically the doors of the school. Now, we're going to go to exercise four. You can always go back to the text to reread. So never feel uncomfortable when you read a question that you're unsure of. Please make sure you reread the text more than once. It's totally fine. Question one, what does Selma do at break? What does Selma do at break? You can pause the video, reread, Write your answer and then check it with me. Selma talks to her friends. So when Selma is having a good time during break time, she usually talks to her friends. Let's go to question two. What is Yin Jang good at? He is good at sports or he is good at karate. Both answers are correct. Question three. How long does he practice sports every day? How long does he practice sports every day? He practices for five hours. So always write your answers, pause, and check. Now we're going to be moving on to lesson two. We're going to be working on grammar during this lesson. Now, uh, in the first exercise, you will circle can or can't and underline must or mustn't. So our main focus today is can, can't, must, mustn't. Number one is done for us. So let's read it together. We must be careful in the laboratory. So if I'm going to be going into the science lab or to the laboratory, I must be careful. Does that mean that I have to be careful or is it an option? It probably means that I have to be careful. It is an obligation. Now let's read number two. We mustn't talk to each other in the lessons, but we can talk at break. So what are we going to do here? We're going to underline the word mustn't. We mustn't talk to each other in the lessons, but we can talk at break. Uh, question three. After lunch, we can go downstairs to the changing room to get ready for P. We're going to circle can because it shows that we have an option of whether to do something or not. Now, question four. Then I must practice karate for five hours. Over here, we're going to be underlining the word must because it shows obligation. Now, let's jump to our grammar box, our favorite part of the session. We're going to be uh, going through the meaning of can, can't, must, and mustn't. So pay attention and you can always use them uh, for practice after they have been explained. Now, we use can or can't to say what you are or are not allowed to do. So, if I'm going to say something that I'm allowed to do or something that I'm not allowed to do, I can use can or can't. So, I can say I can swim. That means I am allowed to swim. Or I can't ride the car alone. Here, it shows that I am not allowed to ride the car. Let's read the example. I can come to the park this afternoon, but I can't stay after four o'clock. So here, I can come to the park this afternoon shows that I'm allowed to come to the park, but I'm not allowed to stay after four o'clock. 
The next one is we must, we use must to talk about necessity and obligation. So if I use the word must, it means it is something that I am obliged or I am forced to do. So uh, if I use the word must, it shows that I am obliged or I am forced or I have to do something. You must look. Right and left before you cross the road. Over here, I have to look right and left before I cross the road for my own safety. So it is a necessity or it is an obligation. I have to do it. We mustn't say that it is important not to do something. Over here. So let's look at the example so that we can understand. You mustn't talk in the library. So over here, this is something that I have to not do. I should not be talking in the library. It is an obligation. It is a necessity. It is important not to talk in a library. Now, you can always use them to talk about things that you can or can't do in your life and something that you must or mustn't do as well. So I hope you understood the difference. Uh, let's jump to the next slide. Now, we're going to complete the sentences with can or can't or must or mustn't. The first one is done for us. Let's look at it together. You must speak English very well to be an English teacher. Okay, in this case, you must speak English to be able to become an English teacher. You have to. It's an obligation. It's a necessity. Let's jump to number two. Sarah blank visits you this evening because she blank do her homework. Think about what you can use here. You can pause the video and think, and then let's check together. Number two is, Sarah can't visit you this evening because she must do her homework. So over here, Sarah will not be able to visit you because she has to or she is obliged to do her homework. Let's go to number three. You blank go to your friend's house, but come home at six o'clock. You blank go to your friend's house, but come home at six o'clock. In this case, maybe a parent is giving permission to their son or daughter to go to a friend's house. So in this case, we will use can. You can go to your friend's house. Let's jump to number four. Only engineers blank use that computer. Only engineers can use that computer. So engineers are given permission to use the computer. Nobody else is given permission. Let's jump to number five. You blank drink water from the river. It's not clean. So our keyword here is not clean. So we're probably going to use something that uh, is uh, negative. So what do you think it would be? You mustn't drink water from the river. So this is very important. It's an obligation or a necessity. You mustn't drink water from the river because it's not clean. Number six, you blank look at the sun. You blank look at the sun. I want you to think about what happens to you when you look at the sun. So if somebody is going to give you advice, what would they tell you? They would tell you, you mustn't look at the sun. So it's a necessity so that you don't hurt your eye. Okay, we're going to jump to our part where we communicate and discuss and practice. What can, can't, must or mustn't you do at home? Discuss and hear. So I want you to find a partner at home, whether it's your sibling, your parent, your cousin, or even your auntie. And let's discuss the things that we can or can't, must or mustn't do at home. So... I would say, I can watch TV after cooking dinner. What is something you can do? I want you to share with your partner. Also, I can't stay up late when I have work the next day. I must prepare my lessons before I go to school. I mustn't ignore my responsibilities before going to work. You can always use your own. Let's read the example on the slide. I can watch television in the evening. I must switch off the lights. So think about something that you are obliged to do 
or the opposite, you are obliged not to do it, and you can use must or mustn't, and you can talk about things that you can or are allowed or not allowed to do using can or can't. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up. Today, we have completed the following. We talked about school subjects and places in a school. We read about Selma and Yin Jang's school days and answered questions. We talked about famous places in Cairo. We read about two places in Cairo. We answered questions about a tourist leaflet. Thank you, guys. This was Ms. Sarah Bassouni. Have a wonderful day.